Hello, Tim here, and welcome to another watercolour demo, a full step-by-step -step guide through my painting process. The scene is Bursa, a very fairly large city in Turkey, and we're looking down from the Green Tomb religious site in, in Bursa, uh, quite a popular tourist destination as well. I'll show you a map in a minute just to give you a bit of context of where we are. We're looking down a street towards uh, a the uh, the Turkish a, a Turkish museum here, um, a cultural uh, museum. It looks rather like a, a mosque, but we're looking down uh, Yeshil Chadesi, the Green Street towards <clears throat> the hills of Ulada, a national park, park um, just to the I think just the south of Bursa where there's um, the Ulada mountain range or Ulada mountain. Um, again, another popular tourist destination and ski resort. Well, so I'll give you a little map of where we are and then just give you a bit of context of the, of the location as well. So Turkey, let's find Istanbul, Istanbul, and then just south of Istanbul is Bursa, uh, just on or just off the coast of the the uh, Sea of Marmara. And let me just zoom in to where we are. Zoom in a bit more. And go to this location, nearly there. Oop, my browser is just frozen. Hang on a second. Let's just refresh it. And there is the green tomb or Yeshil Turba, just there. The location for my painting, I'll go back to my reference photo shortly. We're looking down Yeshil Chadesi, this street here, all right. Looking, looking sort of almost west, southwest. Let me just grab, go into street view. Where my painting is done from is approximately zoom around there's the green tomb it's actually blue blue in color uh, i'm sort of about here or maybe a little bit closer about here looking as i say west or southwest down yeshul jealousy and there's the ulado mountains behind so if you want to check out that location um go up to google and have a little nose around let me go back to my my reference photo now Let's unpick this then from a, a composition point of view. As I say, we're looking down Yeshua Chadesi, see the strong sunlight coming from the left, throwing some quite nice shadows across the, the street there. Loads of people. We're looking sort of slightly down on the scene and there is a bit of a gradient down downhill as well. So we want to try and convey that as well, the, the gradient of the, the location and the perspective as well. On the left-hand side, there are some rather nice Ottoman-style buildings with the light catching the rooftops. Behind, we've got the, the Ulladur Mountains. So we want to try and get a feeling of depth in the scene as regards using values and trying to push that, push those mountains back there. I guess Yeshil Chedes, I'm not sure if it comes from the green tomb or it's the green trees, but there are lots of lovely trees here that are also creating a nice bit of interest and also some contrast um, in the scene. The light hitting the, the top of this dome here, the light hitting the top of the bus. I quite actually like that bus. I'm going to include that bus. Uh, it It is sort of hiding part of the street there beyond the bus but I think it's quite a nice element to give again some sort of context the air busy area maybe it's just dropped off a load of tourists and they're wandering they're they're making their way up to up to the uh the green tomb lots of figures as well in the scene try and include some of those and talk about in my demo talk about the the colour of shadows as well. How can we get some realistic shadows going? Lots of different watercolour techniques. I'm going to go through the complete painting process with you. I've, I've covered here now the 
the source, the the inspiration for me, and uh, the the composition of the scene, and some things I'm going to be thinking about as regards depth, perspective, figures, gradient, values. So I'm going to go through the complete painting process with you, and we'll start off with a drawing, an outline drawing. The paper I'm using, as per normal, Saunders Waterford. 15 inches by 11 inches and I'll go through the paint paint colors um, when I start um, painting I'll describe those colors and uh, my mixing but as I normally do a fairly quick brief outline sketch of the main object starting with the rooftops going down the street these roofs come over the buildings quite a lot there's quite a bit of a, an, an overhang Nice light hitting the rooftops. On the right hand side of the street, we've got the cultural museum with this nice dome to the top of the main building, which I think is the entrance. Try and get that dome shape correct and symmetrical looking. They're probably one of the more difficult things to get right when you're drawing it an architectural scene like this, domes and church spires, trying to make them look symmetrical and the right height, the right width, trying to get the dimensions right. Back to the left hand side, these, the, the perspective of the scene, this bus, just to the right of the centre line and a wheel, the back wheel of that bus the street, there's a few posts in the foreground that are serving quite a useful benefit in trying to connect the foreground with the middle ground and then the shadows emanating from the, the building, a few bold lines for the perspective, just a, a few lines to give me some guidance when I'm doing the going the painting. I think it'd be fairly loose this one, fairly loose on the buildings as well. There's an awful lot of detail in those buildings. They're beautiful wooden uh, wooden structures and balconies and things and lovely windows. I wouldn't be able to do it justice um, in in a a fairly uh, a, if I was a, a sort of tight painting style. So I'm going to go fairly loose as I normally do with this one and just really not too much, not, not, not put too much detail onto those buildings on the left hand side. So that's the painting stage done then. Let me go through the colours on my palette and these paints are handmade watercolour paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. Handmade, very good quality, professional grade watercolour paints. My colours are as per normal. Running from the top, I've got neutral tint, then burnt Umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt turquoise, cerulean blue in the middle, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, had to think there, cadmium red, light red, or actually I think it's called English oxide. It's uh, very, fairly close to a light red terracotta type colour. Then two up from the bottom, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. First of all, the sky, I'm going to keep it fairly brief, just covering the paper. I'm using a soft squirrel mop brush from Jackson's. Not to, confu not to be confused with the, the paint supplier the paint supplier is Jackman's Art Materials. And then there's a fairly well-known online art store in the UK, Jackson's, not Jackman's, Jackson's. So this is one of their own brand squirrel mop brushes. 
a sort of large, largish brush, I reckon. Um, quite old now, lost a lot of the hairs in the middle, but it's still very useful and holds a lot of water. It's still got a good edge to it. it hasn't got a good point, but it's still got a good edge to it. As you can see here with the, the brush head shape, I can be fairly precise when I'm painting around um, objects. So I've got it with a sky, kept the sky. The sky is still quite damp, as you can see with that little bit of glare on the, water, on the uh, paper surface. And I'm now going in with those distant mountains and painting into that damp paper. I'm going to get that soft edge. Keeping the color, the values fairly light as well. A little bit of blue, tiny bit of ridge in green as I come closer, as we come closer towards us. But that blue, hopefully, and that, that value and that soft edge as well will give the appearance of depth in the painting and pushing that those distant hills, the distant mountains, a little bit further back. In this first painting stage or phase, I'm aiming to cover almost all of the paper, except those objects that I want to keep fairly light or I want to handle in a particular way. So anything that's going to be bright or white, I'm going to be painting negatively around those as carefully as I can. So, for example, the dome of the museum, just just where I am right now, the dome of that museum and the bus and maybe some of the windows on the left hand side that are catching some lights or some reflections. I'll paint around those as well. Light blue then for the distant hills, a little bit greener. Trying to alter the intensity of the, the wash mix, so a little bit more pigment to water ratio as I came down to the, the sort of middle ground. Left hand buildings, this is just the first coat. This is just the first wash. Trying to get in some basic colors in here, covering up the paper. Got in fairly cool on that left hand side. There is a slight slope on my board. You'll see the, the paint gradually coming downhill a tiny bit. Start off cool at the top. Go a bit warmer. It's all sorts of different lovely colours in these buildings. These two main buildings on the left hand side, the, the first one is a sort of mid green. They, they've got some lovely, I guess it's pine wood decorative elements to them. The window frames, the, the balconies, beautiful wood and then um, the more distant one is a, a cool red I would describe it as and then going on further on we've got more sort of ochre colors a bit more intense as I come down to the bottom of this first building on the left hand side and you notice with my my fairly erratic brush strokes I'm not too bothered about nice, delicate, well-controlled lines. I'm just almost stabbing, dabbing my, my brush on the, on the paper. And we're getting subtle differences in intensity of that color. A lot of this will be covered over though, with a darker value, just getting in, just getting in, as I say, the basic underlying wash. back to the middle of the street and going over to the right with the museum and then the road here. A 
And the road is actually quite light, very light in the distance, just in front of the, the museum, a little bit darker as it comes towards us. I'm deliberately keeping this road surface quite light. Don't have to think too much about the colour of the road. It's just more the value, not going in too dark. It will, of course, with watercolour, things do dry a little bit lighter. So you've always got to compensate a little bit when, when painting. Just painted the just the bottom of the dome, then down to the the top of that white bus, the white coach. And a bit of a under undercoat to the, the tree on the on the right hand side. Just mop up the bottom of the paper where a little bead has accumulated down there. Don't want that as it's drying, creating a little bloom, particularly in that lighter area on the street. I want to keep that nice and nice and smooth and flat and light. I'll just skip past the, the drying phase. I got out my hairdryer just to speed up the, the drying process. And but you might have noticed just a subtle lightness in how it's dried. That's the first painting stage over with. With that wash covering most of my paper but preserving the lights or areas that I particularly want to be painted in a particular way and or those that are going to be fairly light or even even white like the the rooftops the the top of the bus the bit of the dome as well the the left hand side of the dome the next stage is to go in now with darker thicker paint so i'm using less water and more paint in the in the uh in the mix if you like and being right-handed, I'm going to start from that left-hand side, adding in more of an intense green, which is a bit of that cobalt, turquoise, bit of a blue. A little bit darker just on that right-hand edge where there's a, a drain pipe and the, the gutter coming down from the roof. So a little bit of cobalt turquoise there, yellow ochre. And this is a fairly opaque mix, so it's quite thick. It's not too transparent. It's important with a big area like this to keep varying the intensity of the mix and trying to input different variations in the color the, the strength little changes little subtle changes in color so you can or i can add in more paint i could do a little bit of lifting off i could do a little bit of splattering as well which i'll do later on just to add a little bit more interest in this area as i said earlier i'm going to keep it fairly loose the more you look at the, for example, the, the balconies, the, the woodwork on the balconies and the frames of the windows, you could get fixated by all that detail. And I just want to keep it fairly loose and just create the impression of those buildings and the feeling of light um, coming in and uh, the light on the rooftops and the dark shadows coming out into the street. I'm constantly checking my brush and there are sometimes a few little hairs coming out, coming out of that brush 
which I don't mind. But as long as I've got that edge, just keep checking it and checking also the amount of uh, paint that I've got in that brush also. But that edge is, is now giving me quite a nice hard edge on that rooftop. The, the contrast between the light of the roof and the bit of darkness just below the roof coming to the end. And that big overhang again. A few downward strokes that's just exposing a little bit of the paper, which could be a few windows. Little objects, little sparkles, things catching the light, the top of the windows, the bottom of the windows. Just about here, there's another, I think it's the, a building behind that's catching the light, but a, a rooftop, almost a triangular shape. I just have to think about shapes, a triangular shape catching light. Now, a hard edge there, bit of architectural detail. A lot of paintings will benefit from some very careful straight edges and different edges. So a good strong horizontal or a good strong vertical and those edges could be quite hard just to just give a, a nice compositional element to the, the painting. A lot darker under that triangular little bit of light in the little bit of roof in the middle. Uh, back to the left hand side. Where it gets quite dark on this, not sure if it's the first level, the first floor or the second floor. And it's almost at eye level, but it is quite dark there with a bit of foliage and maybe that it's quite a large entrance to that green building just, just on that left hand side, just where I've put that stroke there. Now I'm using neutral tint here just to create a, a bit of impact with the darks. You could use Payne's Grey. I used to use Payne's Grey quite a lot, um, but I favor neutral tint now. And I could use that neutral tint just on its own if I want to go really dark, but quite often I'll mix it with some other color just so that it's not too... Neutral tint tends to be a sort of charcoal gray color and really great for getting that impact of, of the, the darks, but it does need to quite often be mixed with something. A Viridian green in this example, um, or it could be a, a blue uh, for the shadows, or it could be a little bit of a red just to, to warm things up a bit. So trying to keep it, trying to mix that neutral tint so it's not so charcoal gray. Talking about the shadows, the shade on the wall and the shadows coming out now, I'm looking at the photo for inspiration, trying to get the impression of coming down to the street level where there's a bit more foliage coming out um, from that, from the, uh, the bottom level of the buildings. Not sure exactly what it is. But then the, the color of the shadows coming out into the street, which I want to keep cool. So we've got a fairly warm wall, particularly of that reddish building, the dark green of the nearby left-hand building. But the color of the shadows, I'm going cool. So I'm going to be using a neutral tint. We have in the middle ground a few figures silhouetted against the lighter 
a road beyond and the shape of these shadows is almost like a like a fan coming out and that will just give a, a little bit more interest to the the outline of the shadows and that sort of shape leading the eye into into those buildings and then going beyond as well so here's the sort of fan shape of the shadows coming out don't want to get too dark of course as i said the uh the paint's going to dry a little bit lighter so don't want to go too dark with these shadows but keep it cool and i quite like using cobalt blue for shadows that's that uh, middle one that i've just picked up a little bit more with i'm not actually picking up too much water here there's still a fair bit of moisture on the brush so i don't need to go up and uh, pick up more water here again with the, the brush strokes and the brush directions fairly fairly erratic keeping it loose just looking for shapes and these long shadows they're, they're caused mainly i guess by figures i think the the sun i think this this photograph was taken my source photo was taken mid to late afternoon so the sun is a little bit lower in the sky and creating these shadows from i guess could be figures posts bit of trees and low shrubs and smaller trees on the left hand side there's a post here there are a few street lights and posts and litter bins in the foreground that is just i'm not actually going to define exactly what it is but just just something some sort of vertical element um in that foreground just to connect just to connect with the background bit of splattering while that surface on the left hand side is still quite damp and the timing of the the splattering is important if you do it too soon on a damp surface if it's still too wet then you don't get that kind of blue those blooms appearing or of course if you if it's too dry then then you just end up with blobs of blobs of paint or blobs of clear water i, I invariably use a bit of clear water to to do that splattering and generally a stiffer synthetic brush but clear water generally on a as i say on a damp surface so it's gone past that sort of moist stage and it hasn't fully dried and it's it's uh, you've got that narrow window of time to to get it right contrast now between the dome of the cultural museum and the darker trees beyond this is where i need to be fairly careful with my brush up to the edge of the dome and on the left hand side of the dome a tiny bit of perspective of the top of the building angled down just to give the impression of the uh, the perspective there just a little bit on that left hand side and then the dome itself the shadow of the dome keep it fairly cool I'm not sure what the material is whether it's a sort of a metallic sort of zinc material but I'm going to just soften up that edge with a, a damp synthetic brush I could have I could have made the whole dome itself 
damp first of all with some clear water and then go in with that shadow to get that soft edge or you can do it the way i've done it um go in with the go in with that that the darker shadow on the right hand side and then before it's had a time had time to dry uh go to just uh tamper with the edge of it just to tease out that uh, soft edge The wall now of the museum, a little bit of a ledge, a bit of light hitting that ledge. Don't need to worry too much about the colour, but more importantly, the value. I think go quite dark in there. And it will, on the right hand side, merge in with some lovely large trees on the right hand side they're a similar value or there's well there's a little bit of light hitting the the trees on the right hand side using the same brush not too much paint on the brush so i'm getting a dry brush mark for the edge of the canopy and a few little leaves outside of the canopy just to give a bit of sense of movement try and connect a little bit with the dome as well quite dry then my brush not too much water so viridian green a little bit of yellow try and go a bit lighter as i come down viridian green And I keep turning my brush just as I run out of paint on one side and then just quickly turn it and use the paint on the other side of the brush, if you like, the two sides of the brush. Now merging with the side of the museum, just let those two, let those two colours merge in a little bit. Viridian green. Cobalt turquoise, bit more of the cad yellow, go a bit lighter with the green now. Some darks immediately in the middle and on the right hand side. I will go darker towards the base of these trees as well, down to the street. Lighter here. Just picked up some cad yellow. There's some trees just over to the left of the coach. The trees go over the front of the coach. Tiny bit darker above the coach so I, I can increase that contrast on the the contrast between the light of the coach and the the darkness of the trees again quite a careful edge to the top of the the white bus and now darker towards the base of the trees Need to go a little bit darker on the road and then connect the the road with the bus on that right hand side so neutral tint to get that maximum impact of a dark value here's the bottom of the trees i've left a few little few little sparkles of paper showing through so it's not completely covered it's another element that needs to be carefully thought about and not too many sparkles not too many patches of i can overdo it. i've i've made mistakes in the past where i've left too many little 
patches of paper showing through. It just doesn't doesn't look right. So it's a kind of a balance of um, covering a large area like those trees and just leaving a few tiny bits of, of paper unpainted, which could be a bit of light hitting some shiny leaves, little bits of street furniture, catching the light, a post or something like that. Next, the bus needs to be not so white. I did leave it unpainted. I'm keeping my options open as regards what sort of colour I want to paint it, but it does need to go, I need to tone it down a little bit by using this sort of light blue colour. I would say a light blue color the light is is beyond it the light's coming towards us so it is creating a little bit of a, a shady side to this bus and then a darker shadow below it Neutral tint, ultramarine blue, a bit of alarazin crimson. And with a, either with a smaller brush, I'm still cracking on with this brush. Just introduce that little bit of shadow below. Now this paint is thicker than the blue. All right, so it's, it is gonna mix and the, the paint's going uphill a little bit but it's not going to create a bloom because of the the stronger it's a thicker mix it's, it's got more pigment in it to water ratio just beyond that red building on the left the the buildings going further up the street need to make those a little bit darker. This will give me the definition of that triangular little little rooftop just here. It's going to define that just a bit more. Going with that right hand edge. Leave a, a few little slithers of, of light, a few little vertical slithers of light showing through. Need to add on a little bit more on the right hand side of this building. So I'm using this brush almost like a like a little tiny flat brush in a way. Back to the cultural museum and up to the back of the bus and a bit of light on the back of that bus, but coming down to street level and a a horizontal flat edge to the the base of the buildings behind the behind the bus that's really the the dark shadows done just to recap on the different stages so starting from the beginning trying to think about the design and composition of your scene and then next the outline drawing and then next the initial wash covering most of the paper except those areas that I want to preserve quite light and then I've just done the darker values trying to add in those bigger areas of contrast trying to create the feeling of depth and form in these different objects for example the form of the dome the form of the trees 
and creating those areas of contrast, light things against dark things, uh, particularly in that, in that middle area there of the scene. Next step for me, with a, normally with a smaller brush and maybe even thicker paint, so even less water to paint ratio, with a smaller brush, just adding in the details. So we've done the darks, now we're doing the details to try and pull everything together, make them a little bit more house-like, emphasizing the, the lines and uh, some of the edges and the perspective of the scene. The brush I'm using here is a synthetic brush from WH Smith in the UK. A really cheap brush, but there, there are so many brushes like this. It's a, this is a size eight synthetic brush, synthetic round brush. And it's got a good edge, good point to it as well. But I'm going, it's a lot darker now. And I don't need to worry too much about the color. I invariably use for this stage a bit of ultramarine blue. Alors and Crimson and Neutral Tin. And the, the paint is, by this stage, in my palette, is quite damp, is quite wet, so I don't need to pick up too much water on the brush. And I'm just emphasising some of the architectural elements of the building and looking for shapes, mainly, in the in the source photo, my source photo, creating the impression of that building, emphasizing some of the lines there, that horizontal edge. Not there's not too much, not too much water on the brush at this stage, so I can just create these little dry brush marks. That, that sort of lower left-hand corner is really quite loose. I'm going to emphasize where, where the paint bloomed a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, where the paint bloomed a little bit. Uh, I, I, maybe that could be little bushes uh, down at that bottom left-hand corner, just around that area there. That could be uh, quite a nice shrub or a, a bush or a planter in there. So I can, at this stage, just emphasize a little bit more with a bit of dark paint and dry brush marks, just emphasizing those, uh, those objects and those shapes. And then a bit more of the perspective. I want to get in the impression of a few figures in the scene. So there's a figure there. Sometimes when I look at the, the shadows across the ground, if there's little bits of light, little little areas of paper unpainted, they could be they could be made into the top of a figure or the shoulder of a figure. You know, there's one here, for example, that could be just a little bit of uh, darker value for the face we'll keep the the clothing light there's another one there do you see what I mean I could also cut across some of those lines of shadows I'm just searching around looking for a little bit of inspiration where I can make a figure a few just a few little vertical lines in the in the distance to find the, the top of the museum on, on the right hand side just a bit more and that angle there, helping with the perspective. Just a few faint vertical lines on the side of that 
museum as well. Go a good bit darker in that bottom left corner where that could be just the base of some shrubs. I don't want to overdo it at this stage. I don't want to make that left hand corner too dark. A few little bits and pieces on top of the rooftop. Not sure exactly what they are. More windows on this. I think that's the first floor. I reckon that's the first floor there. Different window shapes. And with, with all these windows, I'm not painting in very formal uh, rectangles. I'm keeping it quite loose as regards to the, the shape of these windows. The bus, talking about windows, the bus needs some windows as well, just to make it a bit more bus-like. And of course, they're all little individual windows on the bus, but from a distance, it just looks like a very long, thin, um, dark, dark rectangle going towards the front of the, the bus. The wheel arches I t of the wheel arches of buses and vehicles and cars, I don't tend to emphasize them too much. I think it just draws too much attention to them. It looks a little bit odd um, in the end. So I, I tend to keep that fairly brief, fairly loose. At this stage, I'm, I'm looking just for things to add in, just some details of uh, architectural details, rooftops, tiles, maybe a few posts on the street, just to add a bit more interest and connect things together as well. Right, some tiles on this rooftop. Need to be fairly careful with this, not too dark. Fairly light, almost dry brush marks. Just makes it a little bit more roof-like. And likewise on the top of the building, just a few lines up there. On the uh, top roof. I just spotted a slightly darker shadow, darker valley in the middle at the ground level. So I'll just, just uh, put in a basic shape there. Some extra leaves just escaping from the canopy of the tree. Cobalt blue. A few more figures. In, in my photo there were maybe a hundred figures, maybe more, um, down the street there. I'm just creating Maybe I've painted in just a six or seven or so, but it creates the impression of some some figures, people down there, just shapes, not individual. I'm not painting individual figures, but just where my brush is now, where I went in initially, and uh, with the with that bigger brush, just created a few little silhouetted figures. There's another one there.
And sometimes when I'm I'm dithering with my brush and I'm try, trying to think, what on earth can I do next? That would be, that's kind of a signal to say that I'm nearing the end of the painting process. I can't think of something extra to put in there. Well, there's, a, there's another figure. If I can't put, think of what extra I want to put in there, that's kind of a message to me, memo to me to, to uh, quit while the going is good. I'm not actually going to use white paint on this one either. I do sometimes at the very end with a small brush and neat white paint, just highlight a few extra elements like the tops of figures or the bit of light hitting a, the, a, a car or something like that. I'm using a rubber to, I, can, I just noticed a few little pencil marks um, showing through where I didn't paint over the paper. So I can just clean those up and get that crisper white edge there with that rubber um, just to emphasize that, that sort of, just to emphasize the edges and say just to tidy it up a little bit more. I don't mind too much pencil marks showing through in the in the end drawing. I think it adds a bit of a, a quality to the painting. As I normally do at the end of my, my videos then just a, a little self-critique, try and be as hard on myself as I can and just review the subject. So this is Yeshil Chadesi in Bursa uh, looking down from the green tomb, the Yeshil Turba, I think it is in Turkish, um, the mausoleum to the uh, one of the Ottomans, Ottoman Sultan Mehmet uh, Celebi, I think, and, and several of his uh, children are um, are entombed in the uh, in the in the green tomb just behind us, and we're looking down Yeshil Chedesi Green Street towards the mountains of Uludağ National Park, beautiful part of Turkey, and the light hitting the dome. We're looking downhill. We've got lots of people, we've got some juicy shadows, we've got lots of values, lights and darks. Want to get the feeling of depth as well and perspective with the scene. And just a little bit of feeling of the, the Ottoman style architecture of these beautiful buildings and the overhang of some of these buildings as well. So that's my source photo and then my painting here. A loose rendition of the scene and with my watercolour techniques well first of all going through the drawing getting the drawing right which I, I think I got it almost right with the perspective there and the the elements and then the paint go through the painting stages first with the wash and try to get in that soft edge the soft hills in the background starting with the sky then going in with the, uh, the, the the slightly darker hill color and a little bit thicker as well, but not too dark, going up to the edge of the rooftops, keeping those unpainted, keeping them nice and light and the dome, covering the whole of the paper, except those areas that are gonna be kept lighter. I want to paint in a particular way. And then the next step was going in with the darker values, the, the shady, side of the buildings on the left the shadows coming out into the street trying to think about the the um the shape of these shadows as well i thought what was quite attractive was trying to get in the sort of the fan shape pattern of some of these shadows so they start off almost they start off almost horizontal in the distance but then they they come um almost vertical if I was going to continue around, it would be going almost a little bit like that. So that's quite a, a pleasing pattern of shadows. The Also the, the trees trying to create then the contrast with the dome of the 
of the cultural museum on the right hand side and i covered my my particular technique in this one for doing for doing these trees um that starting off with that dry brush mark over to the canopy a few wayward leaves bit of bit of movement maybe a bit of wind coming through could be autumn leaves are starting to leaves are starting to fall varying the varying the uh, the um, intensity of the green and the and the different shades of green going a little bit more yellowy there but going darker for the the top of the bus and then next step after that the details with a smaller brush going in with the architectural details just strengthening up some lines a bit of darkness underneath the rooftops um, tiles a few more figures and where i saw in the shadows where i saw some lighter areas i trans i tried to transform those into figures like there was that lighter mark there adding a bit of a dar darker face and some darker legs um where else there was that little bit of light there for that figure that i think that was the first one i started with and with that smaller brush just creating very brief figure figure like shape keeping it all loose um there are so many little bits of light in here that i could have continued like that that line there that could be made into a shoulder possibly of a figure or it could be the top of a an object or a street seller um his or her wagon selling something so just looking around looking for different little opportunities like that in that in that uh, detail stage and just finally sort of pulling it all together um with those with those different little marks but knowing knowing when to stop in this in a fairly loose impressionistic view of this scene just knowing when to stop hope you liked it then catch up with you in the next video